So good morning, everybody. My name is Leslie Mitchell, and I'm a postdoc in the Buca group here in, uh, in New York. Um, I will put my talk on. And so you'll notice uh, as these slides come up, I've, I've changed and sort of simplified the talk title just, just a wee bit um, from what's listed in the uh, program. It's going to go? OK. Uh, to uh, a slightly simpler title that covers uh, something we've been working on actively in the book lab, uh, delivering what we call big DNA to mammalian cells. Um, and so I think what we're here all today to, or this, at this meeting to talk about is the fact that we're no longer limited to the study of cells that are the product of natural evolution. We're now in a position to write and edit genomes in a way that we can build new functions and direct growth of cells with new functions uh, by design. And so when I think about um, this, ac this burgeoning field of synthetic genomics, I sort of break it down. Um, into two sort of big classes of, of thinking about um, editing and, and writing genomes. Those are the two classes. Uh, and this was an analogy from Joel Bader, who may or may not be here yet. Um, and he, he was talking about this in the context of the SC2 project, this idea that in some cases we want to go in and make some very focused edits, much like in this Word document, paragraph one, where maybe there was a typo or a, a word that was incorrect. You can go in and make that very focused edit, and it makes sense to make that change in the context of that paragraph. In other cases, like paragraph two, there's a million edits to make, and it almost makes more sense. In fact, in, in the case of SC2, for instance, it makes more sense to go back, design it, and write it from scratch in a way that then we need to think about how to deliver it to cells. And so for SC2, that meant um, edits that were den densely spaced, approximately 400 bases between clusters of edits. And so we built that from scratch. So starting to think about um, this overview of de, de novo design, and I'm not talking about the desi design here, um, but how to get that from the design and the synthesized fragments or whatever other starting materials you have, which might include uh, BACs, YACs, or PCR amplicons derived from your source material. Um, you can start thinking about, let's see if this works, um, this sort of uh, layer of the um, workflow that involves assembly and editing, and you can use cells uh, for those activities and all sorts of editing tools to build your big DNA of interest, um, which can then be either delivered to your destination cells uh, by conjugation from E. coli, and I know that's not a particularly efficient process, um, cell fusion, which Alina talked about yesterday, um, or via purified DNA and just standard transfection protocols. And so a lot of these activities are now under uh, on underway um, in the Buca lab. For the SC2 project, of course, the, the assembly and delivery were all, are all part and parcel in the sense that our, our delivery um, overwrote the existing DNA and the activity of homologous recombination in yeast is so efficient that the delivery wasn't a big challenge, but we see this as a major challenge for GP, right? Um, so just to break down very, very simply these challenges, um, it comes in, in right up front when you, if you're working with purified DNA in the handling in vitro. Um, and I hope you can all see this cloud of DNA that's precipitated in this, in this ethanol solution um, of a 100 kb construct that I purified by cesium chloride last week. Um, <laughs> how exciting. Um, as Alina was talking about those old school methods, they're coming back to life. Um, so in the act of purifying bigger DNA, it can get sheared um, in a way that the intact transfer into cells is, is limiting. Um, once it's in the cells, it needs to be uh, delivered into the nucleus. Uh, there's a number of pathways um, of naked double-stranded DNA that can activate um, antiviral pathways. Um, and then, of course, the targeted delivery or sp site-specific delivery. Um, and I'll talk about some of these strategies that we're thinking about in the Buca lab. So we're in sort of early, not early stages, but like not quite ready for prime time. So I'm going to highlight some of uh, the, I think, some of the great literature um, that's out there um, to give you guys an idea of the activities that we feel are important for delivering big DNA. Um, so as Alina highlighted yesterday, this is work from her and David Brown. Um, was published earlier in, uh, this year in NAR. Uh, this idea of delivering big DNA via spheroplast-mediated cell fusion, which is just an, an event requiring spheroplasting of the yeast cells, uh, fusing it with the mammalian cells, and um, by virtue of that fusion, delivering the contents of the yeast cell into the mammalian system. And so David Brown et al. 
Um, I think I'd really recommend, if you're interested in this, this type of work, to go back and read this paper. Um, our reporting um, a design of experiments kind of workflow that allows you to optimize based on the, delivery, the destination cell type. Um, and they're showing um, efficiencies um, for delivery um, sort of independent of length scale on the order of 1 in 1,000 cells. So the use of this I, like sphere plus mediated cell fusion is actually longstanding. Um, we've delivered um, in the past um, megabases of DNA in, a, in uh, an untargeted integration um, to mouse uh, ES cells and, and cloned the T cell receptor, which is a 1.2 megabase yak intact. Um, that was untargeted. Another really important approach to think about is the targeted delivery of DNA. And I think one way we're thinking about this is the fact that genomes can indeed capture a linear DNA that's present in the nucleus, regardless of homology. So this idea that you can deliver um, either, there's two approaches that are shown here from two different groups. Um, if your double-strand cut site exists in your vector as well as the genome, you deliver that circular DNA. And it's a relatively efficient process to deliver that entire vector into that cut site via, ver via um, a single double-strand break, either CRISPR or um, talons in these cases. Um, Site-specific combination is another really important strategy that we're working on. And so um, this is like the precise DNA cleavage and ligase ligation without loss of nucleotides. Uh, there's a number of existing heterotypic site-specific recombination systems that are listed here. All of these require a pre-existing landing pad to be engineered into the cell. Um, and so um, this is often thought of for delivery of big DNA and the combination of recombination-mediated cassette exchange. And I think one of the best examples in the literature of this um, is from Doug Higgs's group at, at Oxford. Um, where they've delivered, um, they call their process recombination, or recombination mediated genomic replacements. Um, and they've replaced the uh, mouse alpha globin locus with a human alpha globin locus. So they engineered a back um, to have uh, integrate or recombinated sites with a selection system and engineered the native locus to, to generate a landing pad. And this slide um, shows uh, exactly how they did that. And it's super complicated, so I'm just going to highlight the actually important parts for the delivery. So into the mouse landing pad, they've inserted half of an HPRT gene, which is a selectable marker, flanked, uh, and, and there's a, a LOX site, um, a heterotypic LOX 511, I believe, site um, on the other end um, with a thymidine kinase anti-selection um, resident gene. Um, on the back, they've engineered it in a way that it can be delivered to recapitulate the HPRT gene for hat selection and overwrite the resident thymidine kinase for ganciclovir uh, anti-selection. And then they can pop out that HPRT gene uh, using uh, FLIP. Um, so this is a really nice strategy um, for the delivery of, of big DNA. Um, and we're coming up with sort of um, uh, takes on that approach. Um, and the way we see all this fitting together uh, is represented back to the initial diagram, is building out largely in yeast, and I'll talk about that later in the foundry session, 100 to megabase size molecules of DNA yeast in yeast. Um, then that can be transferred via these fusion protocols directly into the mammalian system, uh, where we've already pre-engineered and characterized landing pads that are integrated by these double-stranded break, um, and then integrating the landing pads via MMEJ or NHEJ. Um, and then using, we're going to call it, and we're not going to unveil it today, unfortunately, but an uh, approach called BIG-IN, uh, which is a take on recombinase mediated cassette exchange um, to introduce this engineered DNA into the existing landing pad. So this um, allows for editing and engineering of the specific DNA sequence in these assembly and editing sort of in this platform, and then the seamless delivery without having to go in vitro uh, um, to deliver big DNA into the mammalian systems. Um, and so with that, I'll wrap up. Uh, here's a list of people involved in all of this work. Uh, the team Big DNA, uh, which involves group members of the Buca lab as well as Matt Morano's lab. Uh, I'll talk about the efforts for um, our automation suite later today and the entire Buca lab. A number of people are thinking about the design and construction of, of synthetic chromosomes and genomes, of course. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Thank you.